Hello, everyone. This is Melissa from Gilda's Club Grand Rapids, and I have with me today Kim. Hi. Um, I am the Noogie Land Coordinator at Gilda's Club, and it's nice to see everybody. Yeah, so it's so great to be with you. We hope that you're watching this well and safe and um, finding things to do while you're still at home and social distancing. We also hope that you're getting away from your computer at times and getting outside and spending some time playing and moving around um, in a safe way too. So we're so happy that today we are bringing you the topic of it's nobody's fault. And this is in reference to sometimes we might feel like uh, when something happens, when someone dies or someone gets a cancer diagnosis, that it was something that we did or didn't do that caused those things in our life. And so we just want to have a conversation. We're going to have a book reading about that. And then Miss Kim has this great craft that we're going to do. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, what are other ways um, that you can also help yourself to talk about that. So um, does that sound like fun, Miss Kim? Sure does. All right. So I think with that, um, there's going to be a little pause here because we're going to share a screen and bring the book. We're trying this a new way. Instead of me holding the book, we made a PowerPoint of it. So you let us know whether you like this or not, if it's easier than to see. Um, and also, I forgot to say, which reminds me that please let us know if you're watching. Just leave us a note in the comment section right under this um, Facebook live post or right in it. And if you have any questions or maybe if you have some suggestions on how you manage your dragons, which is what we're going to talk about, um, let us know. We'd love to share those. So, all right. Well, here we go. On with the book. This book is called You've Got Dragons, and it's by Catherine Cave and Nick Mayland. Dragons show up when you least expect them. You turn around and they're there, and you didn't even expect it. Look how big they are. Wow. Am I dreaming, you think? And you pinch yourself hard, but you're not dreaming. Your heart thuds and your knees wobble and your hands shake and your head whirls and you feel hot and cold at the same time. You can't breathe, your tummy hurts and you can't believe it's really happening to you. But it is, it really is. You've got dragons. Wow, he looks so small compared to those dragons, doesn't he, Miss Kim? Yes, they're huge. Next, yeah. You've never had dragons before, and you're not sure what to do. You say to yourself, why me? Why am I the one to get dragons? Was it something that I did? I've been bad sometimes, but not that bad and mostly I'm good. I've never had been bad enough to deserve this. You're right, nobody deserves dragons. You certainly don't. You didn't get them from being bad. You see all these people in that little circle? They all have dragons too. Miss Kim and I have dragons and we're really, really good people. Dragons are scary though. You try to pretend that yours isn't, but it is. Do you see that dragon at the bottom there? Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we should, yeah, there you go. Pretending. See, this is new. So we're all trying here. <laughs> Thanks for being patient with us. Pretending a huge, great, enormous dragon isn't there is exhausting. Sooner or later, you just stop pretending. 
then you say, okay, it's there, but it isn't a dragon. It's a mouse. Who's scared of a mouse? But that's some mouse. Oh, look at that shadow. That mouse shadow looks just like a dragon. Deep down, you know it's a dragon and you're still scared. Now that you've got dragons, you can't get away from them. They pop up all the time. When you wake up, when you brush your teeth, when you go to school, when you try to eat your lunch, when you're walking home, when you're playing games, when you turn on the television, when you go to bed, when you turn out the light. Especially when you turn off the light. So sometimes you leave it on and that's okay. It's all right to leave your light on. You don't want to think about your you don't want to think about your dragons, but you do all the time. Sometimes when you're doing something like in school and your teacher's going on and say, how do you spell cat? And you think D-R-A-G-O-N, dragon. Oh, what? Big, bigger dragon size. Who are you? A dragon? And they even have here two plus two equals four dragons or two times six equals 12 dragons. Because sometimes when you have dragons, they make you, they have you make mistakes. It looks like his dad is saying, what's this? And he's showing him a drawing and he says, it's a dragon. You're worried people won't understand. If you try to explain, they might think you're weird. So you don't say anything. So you feel just all alone fighting your dragon, even though people are around you. Dragons make everything complicated. Sometimes people try to talk to you about them when you don't want to talk. So how's the old dragon today? Hmm. Well, sometimes when they do want to talk, when you do want to talk, they're too busy or they don't want to listen or they just don't understand. Or sometimes they want to do all the talking. They might say, let me tell you about my dragon. Not helpful. Sometimes you feel like you're burning up inside and you want to shout to your dragon, go away. And you'd like to stomp on it and kill it. But you need very big shoes. It seems so much bigger than you. Sometimes you get icy cold and shivery and you just want to be alone. When you've got dragons, you need lots of hugs. And he's saying, can I have another hug? Soon, you are the world's greatest expert on having dragons. By popular demand, Ben's advice column. Dear Ben, I wanna run away from my dragon. What kind of training should I do? I am six years old. Do I need special shoes? If so, please tell me where I can get pink ones. Sincerely, Sophie. Dear Sophie, special shoes and training won't help. Take it from me. Dragons are too fast to run away from. Yours, Ben. Dear Ben, I have been trying to hide from my dragons for 40 years, eight months and four days. Can you recommend a foolproof hiding place? Hopefully, Dad. Dear Dad, try under the stairs. It's more comfortable than under the bed. I was always wondering what you were doing under there. Your loving son, Ben. P.S. Say hi to your dragon when they find you. They will. 
Dear Ben, I got dragons last month when I moved to our new house. My tummy hurts every morning. Is this normal? I also have purple spots on my tongue. What do you suggest I do? Anxiously, Dave. Dear Dave, in answer to your letters, one, yes. Two, stop chewing on your markers. It makes your teeth purple too. Your friend, Ben. Ben's top tips for what to do when you've got dragons. Number one, give your dragon your full attention at least once a day. Dragons get bigger when they're ignored. Greetings, honorable dragon. Greetings, honorable Ben. Dragons almost always have a deep voice, I think, at least in my life. <laughs> Number two, really get to know your dragon. Give it a name. What sort of dragon is it? Look at it really hard, then draw a picture of it. There's a craft you could do. This is Montgomery, my math test dragon. He is dark red with orange claws and small green spots on his chest. Number three, if you make your dragon laugh, it might get smaller. Try telling it jokes. Number four, talk with someone else about your dragon and remember to get plenty of hugs. Ask for one right now. So if you can't ask for one right now because we're socially distancing, you can give yourself a hug. Miss Kim, you should give yourself a hug right now. Oh, your body really doesn't know the difference. When you, when you give yourself a hug or you give someone else a hug. And everyone should have seven hugs a day, including your dragons. <laughs> so this is Montgomery eating my math teacher. And this is kind of funny because it's a joke and he's talking to his, his dragon at the same time. So that's kind of fun. Dragons won't stay forever. You think they will, but they won't. You ignore them, you run away from them, you hide from them, you pretend they're not dragons, you shout at them, and you don't want to turn out the light, and you pay attention to them, and then you tell them jokes, and you can't think of anything else, but then suddenly, hmm, something feels different. And you look around, the dragons leave when you least expect them to. You wake up and they're, boop, they're gone. Yours is, it really is. After all your hard work, your dragon is gone. Congratulations, great job, hooray. Now you'll know exactly what to do next time you have dragons. Because once you have them, you kind of figure it out, right? One more page, yep, there you go. Ancient dragon wisdom. On your way through the world, keep your eyes wide open. Dragons will come in all shapes and sizes. They don't all look the same. And they don't all look like dragons. Sometimes they look like cancer. Sometimes they look like death. They look like grief. They don't, they don't all mean to harm us. They just are. It's part of how life is. Honor the dragons that you meet and learn from them. They always have something to teach us. They are not as powerful as you think and no dragon is more powerful than you. That's it. What do you think of that, Miss Kim? I love that story. I love that story because um, at first, when the dragons came, he was very scared. And all the way through the story, the dragons just stayed with him, whether he was at school or out playing. And he especially had those dragons at nighttime when he turned off the light. Yeah. But in the end, he learned how to get along with his dragon. And I like the part where it says, after you do all the hard work, your dragon goes away. So yeah. all those steps in the story that Ben went through by getting to know his dragon, by asking for hugs, by talking to people about mm -hmm. the things that he was worried about, yeah. those dragons got smaller and smaller and smaller until they went away. And you can learn how to do everything in your life without those dragons bothering you all the time. Maybe sometimes or a little bit less, but not all the time. 
Yeah. I really loved how Ben worked through all his dragons. And I like it when he opens the windows in that one picture and it's sunny outside. And he said, everything just felt different. And he didn't yeah. know what it was, but really his dragon had gone away. Yeah. And things were sunny again. So there's always hope at the end when you have a dragon. I yep. love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we often, uh, um, in our experience and in our groups and the pe- meeting the people we do at Gilda's Club, that they come in with dragons. Um, and often as children, we feel like we've done something that has caused that dragon to happen, that we've caused the diagnosis of cancer or that we caused that person in our life to die by something we did or didn't do. And um, often that's part of getting to know our dragon is that those things of having, being on a grief journey, having someone die in our life or having someone be diagnosed with cancer are big deals. Those are big big deals. Yes. And you can't cause someone to get a um, diagnosis of cancer. And you certainly um, can't cause, don't typically cause someone to die. Um, That those kinds of things happen in life and um, accidents happen, mistakes happen, people die, people get ill, and we learn to live with it. We learn to live with it. We learn to manage ourselves with it. We learn to manage our dragons and talk to other people, talk to um, talk to ourselves and talk to our dragons and uh, many other things too, to help us cope. So, and Miss Kim and I, I know that I have dragons in my life. I know that when my father was diagnosed with dementia and um, got sick that I thought, oh my goodness, did I do something or did I not do something to help him so that he wouldn't get this? But the reality is that that is just what happened. And, um, and we learned to adjust to it and we learned to um, manage um, our feelings around it and share with each other in our family about that. And our dragon got smaller and smaller and smaller and got much more manageable. Um, how about you, Miss Kim? Do you have dragons in your life? Um, when you're telling about your dragon, I was thinking about the time that um, my stepdaughter Nikki got into a terrible car accident and died. And, you know, my dragon was, you know, what if she had been at our house instead of out in a car with her friend? What if she were here with us instead of going and doing that and at that place at that time? You know, you always think that, you know, if things were just a little bit different, this wouldn't have happened. But we know that it was an accident. And that's exactly what an accident means. It's no one's fault. But our dragons, and like in the story, it says that our dragons can make us do things we don't normally do. And that dragon is making, made me worry or think how I could have changed the situation so yeah. that it didn't happen and cause everyone in our family so much grief and, and cause, you know, our Nikki to die in that car accident. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that story. And I love that in me telling my story, you recognized something in you. And that is exactly what happens at Gilda's Club, right? Is that we encourage people to tell each other their stories, share their own strength, their story, strength, and hope. And it then inspires someone else to tell theirs. And we feel connected. And we don't feel so alone. Then. We could yeah. help each other um, mm-hmm. deal with our dragons. And that's yeah. the wonderful thing about Gilda's, yeah. Yeah, that's so yeah. great. No, oh, thanks for sharing that. So Miss Kim also has a really cool craft she's gonna show us. Oh, it's a dragon craft. We are going to make dragons. And if you look on your screen and you go to Pinterest, there should be a little link right on there at the top. You could write that down so that you could go back and look at it later and um, maybe go step by step if you're not doing the craft with us right now as I do it for you. 
Um, so it shows you on the screen of the different things that you can use. And as I went around my house, I didn't have all those things. So I'm going to make the same craft, but I'm going to make it with some things that I found at my house in case you don't have those things. And it, you know, you don't, if you don't feel safe to go to the store or whatever, you don't even need to. You can just use anything that you have around your house. And that way your dragon is unique to you. Everyone's doesn't have to be the same. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is a toilet paper tube. And I know that everyone has some of these around their house. <laughs> Don't go and empty the whole roll though, mom will not be happy. And I have a piece of green paper that I measured to fit around my toilet paper tube. So I'm gonna put that on right now and I am just rolling it on my tube like this so that it covers it. And I'm just gonna use a piece of tape a piece of scotch tape. And I think everyone probably has that. If you don't have that, you can use a glue stick. You can use a glue gun with your mom and dad's permission and help probably. So I'm just taping mine on and that's going to be the bottom of my dragon. And now my tube turned green like a dragon. But in the story, Ben's dragon was red with small spots. So do you have to make your dragon green? No. You can make your dragon any color you want it to be. All right, now our dragon needs some eyes. And on Pinterest, it shows those little green fuzzy pom-poms, but I didn't have any at home. So I found some green beads. For this, I'm gonna use a glue, or a glue gun though. So I'm gonna glue it on. So hold on and I will show you. My glue will come out here. All right, and my bead had a little hole in it. So I'm gonna use that hole to be his eyeball. And I'm gonna glue another one right next to it. So I have my glue gun. I'm gonna put it on this side though. All right. And get that eyeball looking there. So here's his eyeballs. Okay. And they have little holes in them. Can you see them? Yes, yes. If you want, I even thought, you know what? You could use rocks. You could go outside and find little rocks in your yard. And you could glue them on and then use a marker or some paint and put a dot or an eyeball. Or maybe you have those wiggly eyes at your house like they show on the Pinterest. I couldn't find mine. I know I have them, but I couldn't find them anywhere. So I am using these instead. All right. So now we need his nostrils. Do you know what nostrils are? There are these holes inside your nose where air comes in. Dragons need them because when they breathe in, through their nose and then they breathe out their fire comes out so we need to have our nostrils right here and i'm gonna put them right i'm gonna use glue gun again for this part because it is something that we want to stick on there all right so now i have my dragon's eyes and i have his little nostrils and the last thing we need is the fire that comes out of the dragon when it breathes in through his nostrils and out through his mouth. I have a whole bunch of things. The Pinterest showed tissue paper or crepe paper that you can get at the dollar store, but I didn't have any of that. So I did have ribbons. I have yellow ribbons and I have some red ribbon and I have some orange polka dot ribbon. And I even had an old tablecloth that I used at my son's graduation party that I thought, oh, that you just want something that's kind of flimsy that will blow in the wind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the nostril part of my dragon and I'm gonna use scotch tape for this. And I'm gonna take my ribbon and put my tape on it. Whoops, stuck to my finger. And I'm gonna tape it inside my dragon. Now there's just one, you're gonna wanna tape them all around the inside. So let's see, I'm gonna put a red one on. I like to make my fire red, yellow, and orange, but you can do yours any way you want, any colors you want even. All right, whoop, gotta make sure your tape's not sticking on the other things. Let me get a couple more on here so that you can see it blow. And then I'm gonna tell you how you can use this to help yourself when those dragons are really, really bothering you. Because sometimes those dragons are kind of a pain 
and they bother you and you worry about them and you think about them. And sometimes they're just funny. So we're gonna make a funny looking dragon that's going to help us feel better when those dragons are visiting. All right, now I've only got four on, but you can put as many as you want. If you want your fire, oh, hmm. good thing I used my glue gun because when I dropped it, his eyes stayed on, see? All right, so this looks a little funny because you really need a lot more of these. But one of the techniques that we talk about at Gilda's Club, when things are bothering us, when we're worried about something, when we have dragons, one of the ways that we relax is by taking deep breaths. And when we use our dragon to take our deep breath, he blows out his fire and you can see those worries going away. So taking a deep breath, put your mouth right at the end. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is why tissue paper works the absolute best because it blows. Oh, it worked that time. You did. Take in a deep breath and blow. Yeah, and it worked. See. Yes, and when you take those deep breaths and you think about blowing those worries out, it really can help you calm down. It helps those dragons take a little rest for a while too. So let's try it one more time. Take try turning sideways. Breath. Try turning okay. sideways. There you go. Whoa, yeah. all right, ready? Here we go. Oh, I didn't take a very deep breath that time. It really works a lot better with tissue paper. I think if I had a whole bunch more of these on, it would work too. So you can try it any way you want. Try all different kinds of things. The lighter, the better. And make your maybe you want to make scales on your dragons. You can decorate however you want. But the main thing is you take those deep breaths and calm down. Because a lot of times when we're very anxious or upset, if we can just calm ourselves down, it makes us feel a lot better. That's great. It, it, you know, that is such a neat craft and th makes me think about the page in the book where he says, get to know your dragon and mm -hmm. what color your dragon is mm -hmm. and draw a picture of your dragon, name your you dragon. You can even name him, right? Yeah. And you could actually make one of those for each of your dragons uh -huh. and you could color them different and, and put their name on it and all of that. Um, you could even write a story about your dragon, why your dragon is in your life. And well, you have all this area around here. You could even write on your dragon what what that dragon represents. What worry sure. do you have at that time that you made this dragon for? Yeah. And then, you know, you can see if you collect them, you can see how many dragons that you've made go away over time, which would That's... be very exciting for you and, and a good feeling. Yeah. And then you could take that if you made one for each of your dragons and you could, if you want to talk about it with your adult in your household, you could take it and put it somewhere that they can read what the name is and, and um, what brought that dragon. And then you guys could talk about it and you, that could be your signal to them, to your adult that you want to talk about it. And uh is putting that maybe on, on the kitchen table or what, whatever, wherever that you have a common space. So I think that's such a great idea. Thank you for showing us You're that. welcome. Yeah. So we hope that for all of you, that you take a little bit of time today or tomorrow and you think about your dragons. And we're currently in a world that has actually lots of dragons that have showed up. Um, COVID is a dragon, and sometimes our households are um, touched by that, and we get to, we know people that maybe have it, or we're afraid we might get it. Those are all dragons. Those are all worries that we have, in addition to our grief and our cancer journey that we're trying to manage. So um, these are all really good things to talk about to draw about, to make a dragon about, um, and to really help yourself process to know that you're not alone, 
that everyone has dragons, whether they talk about them or not. And everyone has dragons that they're dealing with. And we would love to talk with you about your dragons here at Gilda's Club. You can always contact us um, on our website, um, www.gildasclubgr.org. Um, or give us a call at 453-8300 and we'll help you get connected to groups where you can talk about your dragons. You can bring your dragons to group. <laughs> There's plenty of room. Right now we're 100% virtual. So we have our all of our groups online. And um, we'd also love to talk with you about how to get connected to that. So. We hope that you and your dragon are all well and your families are well. Know that we miss you all and we look forward to the time we're able to get back together. And um, I guess with that, I'm done. Do you have anything else, Miss Kim? Nope, I just look forward to the day that we can all be together again in Noogie Land. Yeah. I miss seeing all my friends yeah. and doing projects with you. We have so much fun when we do. So. I hope you really like this one and I look forward to doing them together again someday. Yeah, it made me think of, please let us know if, if you like this video, like it, share it, watch it again. If you have any questions or if you wanna take a picture of your dragon and, and send it to yeah, us, we'd love, to, love see to see it. Yeah, and we also have the West Side Walk coming up in September. Right now we're managing all of that virtually. And so you can see that on our website too. It's our um, main fundraising event and celebration of Gilda's Club that we do every um, September. And so we'd love you to join a team or get connected with us. So I think that's it. Thanks so much, Miss Kim. You're welcome. All right, Bye, we'll everybody. see you all soon. Bye. Take care.